Hi everyone, this is Archangeli. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to old friends and a very warm welcome to new friends. So today we're going to talk about an outfit that I've had in my collection for a little while but I haven't opened yet. So this is the Miku kimono that Volks released at Dolpa 42. I purchased this in person myself at the DP42 after event in Tokyo in January 2020. And if you watch the shopping haul video that I posted way back when, I showed off this outfit, I showed off some of the other things I bought on that trip, and then that was it. This outfit hasn't seen the light of day since then. I put it in a drawer and I kind of forgot about it because the pandemic happened and I wasn't going to doll meets and I had no reason to open this up. So it's an absolute shame. <laughs> so I really think we should open this because the timing right now is perfect. It's Miku's 15th birthday, so I think it's a great time to have a look at this outfit. I also have these geta that this outfit was modeled in and I also have these cute little hair accessories these kanzashi these weren't sold with the kimono per se but all of the photos that you see with Miku modeling she's wearing these kanzashi so I think it's just nice to open everything up dress up a doll and yeah let's get to it so here we have the furi sewed and you can see it retailed for 13,000 Japanese yen as far as sizing it fits basically super dolphy and dolphy dream but not the dynamite and here are the Zori, the uh, sandals that I've been calling Geita, but Zori is the more formal name for these. And here is the headpiece. You can see that it is in this little photo here, which is why I purchased this particular hairpiece to go with this kimono set. Now, this is part of the Volks Tenshi no Koromo line, which is specific for Dolphy Dream. It, it fits other size dolls as well, but it is designed with Dolphy Dreams in mind. So here are one set of directions, and this is the uh, outdoor, sorry, the indoor way of wearing a furisode. So you see the skirt kind of opens up and the hem of the kimono uh, kind of drags on the ground a little bit. This is the more modern way with the waist fold so that if you were to walk outside wearing your beautiful furisode, the hem of it wouldn't be uh, puddling and dragging on the ground. So that's how I'm going to dress my doll today and that's what I'll show you. So next we have socks and a couple of elastic cords. And this is the cotton jubon, the undergarment, as well as waist padding. This is the obi. And here we have an underskirt. So this is a beautiful peridot green underskirt with an elastic waist. And this is the furisode itself. So let's just unfold this and have a look at it. There's all sorts of beautiful flowers on here. There's peonies, there's wisteria, there's some chrysanthemum and cherry blossoms. This is just a lovely springtime print. And it is double lined with this satin. So on the inside, it's this yellow to white gradient satin, which is really, really lovely. And then on the inside of the sleeve, you can see it's double lined with this solid yellow fabric. And actually the inside of the sleeve also has a little bit of a light blue to white gradient as well. So there's a lot of detailing on this piece. It's really, really beautiful furi sewed. Now I don't have a Dolphy Dream Hatsune Miku, so we're going to use Gabby here. Gabby is a Dolphy Dream Akira. She's on a Dolphy Dream sister body, so it's the same proportions as Hatsune Miku, except Gabby's got the small bust. Miku has the super small, so extra flat chested, but in all other respects, same body size. So it'll look about the same in this photo. She's even got little twin tails. Now the instructions show two different ways to dress the foodie side onto the doll. You can either do things the easy way, which is kind of like a bathrobe, but you've been with me now for two kimono dressing videos. We're good to do things the complicated way because I think it looks better. So I've put the underskirt on Gabby already, and next we're going to put the waist padding on her. So in a real world, you wouldn't put this kind of padding right against your skin. You would put it over your undershirt because you don't want to be sweating into your padding. But since dolls don't sweat, we're just going to follow the instructions. So we're going to put the waist padding on and next we'll put on the cotton uh, undershirt the juban and then we'll bring the cords around and tie this in the front give it a little adjusting so it's not bunching in the shoulder and that looks good so next we'll put on the furi sewed so we'll just feed the shoulders sorry feed the arms through the sleeves and just make sure that you get it through both layers of the fabric get her wrist through the holes there and then we'll get the other arm and next, we'll make sure that the left panel goes over the right panel, as always. And you can see the bottom of the hem just kind of puddles there. It is quite pretty. And this is how you would wear it in the uh, indoors kind of situation. 
So I'm just going to tie one of these elastic cords around the waist and you could put the OB on over the elastic cord here and that would be basically what the first set of directions is showing you. But I'm going to keep going. So we're going to adjust the length. So I just pulled from the waist up over that elastic cord to adjust the length of the footie sewed. And I'm going to do a little bit of fidgeting to get a nice crisp crease at the waist and at the same time just try to get everything laying flat and laying smoothly. Now while I do all this adjusting, if you're liking this video, please do hit the like button and if you haven't already, maybe hit the subscribe button so that you get a notification when I post something new. So I'm just going to keep adjusting here until I'm satisfied with how this footy sewed comes along. So I actually had to untie, retie, adjust this about four time. I think fourth time was the charm. Um, so just some general thoughts. So getting the front here to lay nice and flat while not leaving a big gap at the back of the neck is tricky. So that's point number one. Point number two, you don't want to see the jubon, that white undershirt underneath. So just make sure that that's hidden. And if you need to tighten it underneath, do that. Um, making sure that this crease, this pleat, is this fold here is nice and straight, somewhat, and even in the front and back is tricky. And I mean, as it is right now, I don't have it perfect. You can see it's kind of slanting up in the back, but it looks good in the front. So you just keep adjusting until you're happy with it. Uh, what I did notice that having that the elastic lay flat rather than having them bunched and twisted, it really does help a lot. So make sure that you've got the elastic nice and flat. Now, obviously, when you're tying in the back, it's a little more difficult. So keeping it flat, even if you need to ask a friend to help, will make this process much more easy. Another thing that I did notice is that this fabric, this kind of polyester satin, it snags really easily. So make sure that you trim your nails, file your nails. And if you've got little dry bits of skin around the edges of your fingers, make sure you trim them or moisturize, whatever you need to do. I don't want to say put on lotion before you because you don't want your hands to be greasy. But if you feel little snags when you're touching this fabric, tend to your hands because you don't want to ruin this fabric. Now let's put on the obi. Now this obi is idiot proof. It's got this knot is already tied on the inside. This cord is sewn on and the bow is already sewn on. So there's nothing that you need to do to fold it. And there's a couple of little thread loops here on the end so that it can accommodate different sizes. And then there's hooks on this side. So we're just going to turn this around, bring this to the back. And once I've got that centered in the front, I'm going to turn it again and we're just going to align this to the little thread loops. So for the Delphi Dream, the Delphi Dream sister body, I'm using the loops that are further in because this is a smaller body type than compared to the Super Dolphy. You want the OB to be a little more tight fitting. So excuse me while I just kind of get that in. It is a little bit tricky. Got the top one and let's get the bottom one now. All right, so there's the OB. Huzzah, we've got that on. So that's how that looks from the back. I'm pleased with how it looks at the front as well. So here's Gabby with her head back on. I'm just going to put this little uh, hair piece in this little Kanzashi. And there we go. So this is the Miku Furisod. So here's Gabby with her head on all dressed up. All that's left is to put on her little hair ornament, this beautiful Kanzashi. So let's just clip that in. Click. And here she is. So I really do love this formal Furisod. I love that the Zori matched the Obi perfectly. It's the same fabric that's ornamenting the sandal straps. And I love the print, this floral motif with the peonies. It's just really, really beautiful. 
And I do appreciate that Volks has already simplified this a little bit. So this yellow trim is already tacked in, so you don't need to be dealing with underlayers. They've already pre-tied the string and this pink ribbon at the top of the obi here, so you don't need to be fiddling with that, which is great. And then unlike the other two outfits that I've reviewed recently, the bows already touched the obi, so that's one less thing for you to be fiddling with as well. Obviously, if you do want this sort of fit with the crease here and the footy sewed above the ankles, it's going to be more fiddly. You saw me tying and retying a few times. It's fiddly, but it's worth it. I personally am not a fan of where you see the underskirt peeking out and the bottom of the footy sewed puddling, but that's just a personal thing. I prefer this. So again, the instructions come with directions for either or, and it's a matter of personal preference how you'd like to style this outfit. I think if this actually were on Hatsune Miku with her bright teal hair, this light blue would just complement it really, really beautifully. I mean, it's still really cute with Gabby and her peach twin tails. Anyway, so this is the Pale Blue Fury Sword by Volks. I do hope you enjoyed this outfit review and dress up time with Gabby. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you like this video. Be sure to like and subscribe so you get a notification when I post something new. And until next time, have a great day and I'll see you soon.